So, uh, start my timer. As Hugh said, I'm uh, here at the beginning of the session, perhaps at the beginning of the process, and I'm going to be talking about the costs of actually getting all this data that, as a member of a team of two or three people, we're producing so much of and not necessarily know what to do with, but I'm not going to answer those questions, hopefully. or not going to have to answer them. So just a quick introduction to English, sorry, Historic England and geospatial imaging. Quick, uh, quickly talk about laser scanning and photogrammetry, the costs of the capital investment involved in getting uh, up to speed with that, uh, those processes. And then contrast that with the cost of procuring the services from the commercial sector. Look at some efficiencies through a couple of case studies and then a, uh, a summary. So I won't bore you with the mission statement of Historic England, but just to remind everyone that about three and a half years ago, English Heritage was split into a government agency called Historic England and a charity still called English Heritage, which manages the uh, collection of uh, historic properties such as these uh, samples here. Uh, this um, diagram here sort of... Uh, tries to uh, suggest which types of techniques might be applicable in certain areas. And um, I'm guessing that we're sort of, um, can anyone see the pointer? We're talking about the boundary between the, the blue and the orange uh, in, uh, uh, thank you, in, uh, archaeolog in the archaeological world. Um, obviously, laser scanning and photogrammetry can be applied to uh, potentially much larger areas than a lot of archaeological projects and possibly produce a lot of a lot more points, uh, but not necessarily. So laser scanning is a broad term. There's a wide variety of uh, instruments and techniques that are covered by laser scanning. What I've conspicuously missed off here is actually um, close range laser scanning for artifacts, which I imagine quite a lot of people are actually interested in. But um, this is a range of scanning techniques that could possibly be applied to archaeological sites or um, archaeological, well, buildings archaeology, should I say, which is where I'm <coughs> more uh, involved. Needless to say, Historic England doesn't have a uh, mobile mapping system on a car or a backpack, but we do have some laser scanners. Uh, here's just a... Uh, sort of graphic showing the potential investment in that might be required for laser scanning. Uh, every now and then there's a, um, a disruptive influence. So a few years ago it was that um, pointer on here. Yes. The uh, Faro there, which was uh, almost as good as competition and half the size and half the price. And then uh, Leica responded with this one here that's even cheaper and almost as good, but probably uh, limited in range for some applications. And then if you've really got plenty of money, then you can go for the Rolls-Royce uh, laser scanning system up there. Uh, you also have to consider not just the price of the equipment, but the cost of the software you're going to need to process the results of those scans, the uh, high-spec PC, and then Storage, just as work in storage, of uh, however many hundreds of gigabytes of data, as well as hopefully someone else is going to address the cost of archive down the line. Uh, photogrammetry is, due to the advent of structural motion, is increasingly becoming competition for laser scanning uh, from the ground, from drones, from conventional aircraft. Uh, it's generally applied to buildings, um, producing uh, so this is a point cloud, but then an auto photo elevation, which potentially could be uh, the product itself, or people quite often digitise off that to produce the line drawings. But um, at least uh, architects generally want to see. A lot of landscape archaeologists are using drones for their initial mapping of. Uh, to produce a uh, 3D model of the surface, which can interpretation can be done on site, and then perhaps refined uh, 
sorry, the interpretation can initially be done in the office and then perhaps refined on site. So contrasting with the slide a few uh, slides ago, the cost of photogrammetry is uh, an order of magnitude less. The, uh, I guess one of the main costs would be a camera and I would say that you uh, should spend as much money as possible on a camera. Everyone says, oh, you can do it with your mobile phone, but I haven't got time to go into why the results from a mobile phone aren't as good as from a full featured, full, full sensor size digital SLR, but uh, needless to say, that is the case. Uh, it's also probably worth spending as much as you can on lenses. A uh, camera body's um, last year's model is probably just as good as next year's for photogrammetry, but the uh, more you spend on the lens, the better results. And then there's also various uh, accessories that you might need if you're working in buildings, uh, lights, if you're uh, using uh, professional uh, software or looking for professional results, you're going to need some sort of scaling, be it scale bars or using a total station for getting uh, coordinates and targets. The uh, cost of software is another consideration. Um, if you want to uh, have actual scaled results, if you want more for photos, then you generally have to pay for the uh, pro version of software. Uh, the uh, bizarre one is, I think it's already been mentioned in one of the sections, is the price of capturing reality, which is uh, 90 pounds for a three month rental or 14,000 pounds for a petrol license. I'm sure anyone would live long enough to uh, justify buying that license. There's also some free uh, free software there, which uh, I think the Visual SFM relies on command line. So if you're that sort of person, that's good. But the Alice Vision one is has got a proper GUI. But again, you need a high spec PC for efficient work, and uh, you've got to consider storage and archive. It's quite easy to generate gigabytes of photography just on one project. The other option rather than making that investment to do it yourself is to buy the service from a contractor. Why would you do that? Potentially for value for money. The contractor <coughs> is already set up with their economies of scale. You don't have to learn to do the process yourself. You don't have to buy the equipment you have a more flexible way of accessing the resource. If you're not working on a project that requires a laser scanner then you and a laser scanning operator for half the year, then it's not sitting redundant in your, your cupboard. But just a plea to make sure you use the specification and there's one freely downloadable from there. So uh, these are very average costs. The, uh, the higher value there for photogrammetry is probably for actually resulting in uh, line drawings from the, uh, the 3D model. The uh, things like topographic survey <coughs> is just a general topographic survey, not with uh, archaeological interpretations. So I guess that would be an extra on top of there, but something to consider anyway. Then just a couple of uh, case studies, which I've got to whiz through. So um, I've got a uh, medieval hall house here in uh, West Yorkshire which was scanned and photographed in a day. Uh, the registered laser scan point cloud was combined with all the imagery and capturing reality to produce these various 3D models. Author photos that uh, either laser scan data or the author photos could be used for the production of drawings, which was done in about three days. So as well as these sections, there's plans and external elevations. So uh, that possibly has to be contrasted with hand measuring the whole building for a building's archaeology uh, project. Another one uh, is uh, wide area excavation. So this is a project near Stonehenge. Ex as an experiment, we scanned the whole thing, but actually the photographic coverage, which was achieved using ground-based photography and a mast, in, uh, for, there was about five of these trenches that was done in half a day. Uh, with the result looking like that, which uh, obviously still requires some interpretation, but not being an archaeologist, I won't guess how long that would have taken to 
and plan and how you would have planned these uh, various undercuts and so on. It did require a total station for control, but we were able to produce uh, 3D PDFs of, uh, of all the site, all the trenches. The only interesting one, I guess, is this one, which is um, two burials, which were actually um, excavated at different periods. So this view would never have actually been available uh, in real life. Um, but it uh, allows you to easily transmit the results of, uh, of your uh, survey. And then I oh, wrong one. <laughs> and I'll just move on to my... Yeah, so uh, that's what I've just said. Um, so probably only half an hour for the photography, a couple of hours of actual person work, and then several, if not tens of hours of processing time of a computer, which potentially could just be left to work overnight or uh, over the weekend. And then uh, as well as 3D PDF, we can um, transmit the results by uh, through um, things like Sketchfab, you can add annotations so the data is being used for more than one purpose just uh, quickly move on to my summary before I get uh, oops, kicked off sorry I missed <laughs> lost my summary there we are so um, <coughs> the capital investments can be high photogrammetry is obviously a cheaper option subcontracting is a possibility but is it going to save us money when archaeologists are paid so little to do what they do? So sorry for the rush at the end there, but we can obviously take it up in the uh, question and answer session.